Hello and welcome to the Death Row and Executions channel. I'm Paco Rivera. The state of Alabama recently added another death row inmate to the list of scheduled executions for this year. Alan Eugene Miller is set to be put to death on September 22nd, meaning there will be two executions scheduled for that day. The other is Richard Eugene Glossop of Oklahoma, which is a very interesting story because Glossop was convicted for a murder, even though he wasn't actually the one who killed the victim. He was convicted of hiring somebody else to do it and was sentenced to death. Alan Eugene Miller was convicted for shooting and killing three people, two employees and one former employee at the place where he worked as a uh, delivery truck driver. Once again, those two executions, Miller in Alabama and Glossop in Oklahoma, are set for September 22nd. In August, two executions are set to take place. One is James Coddington in Oklahoma, a man convicted for killing his friend and co-worker in 1997. That execution is set for August 25th. But before that, in Texas, we have Kosul Chantakaman. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Kosul Chantakaman was last scheduled to be executed on November 3rd of last year, but a last-minute appeal pushed the date to August 17th of this year. Chantakaman, whose family is from the country of Laos, but he was born here in the United States, was convicted of robbing and stabbing a real estate broker in Texas named Sarah Walker while she was alone inside a model home that she would show to potential clients looking to buy a house. Actually, if you want to know a lot of details about this crime, there is an episode of Forensic Files called House Hunting that covers it very well. The FilmRise Network, who acquired the Forensic Files series, has a channel here on YouTube and you can watch it here. It is from Season 13, Episode 2. You can also see it on Netflix without commercials. Netflix has the Forensic Files episodes listed in collections and the house hunting episode can be found in Collection 7. On July 8th of the year 2006, a married couple that arrived at a model home in the Craig Ranch subdivision of McKinney, Texas, found the real estate broker that was going to show them the house, Sarah Walker, who was 40 years old, dead and bloody on the floor inside. It was determined that she was stabbed 33 times, had blows to her head, and she had a bite mark on the back of her neck. Jewelry she was wearing, a ring and a watch, were missing. Bloody fingerprints and DNA found under Sarah's fingernails and from the killer's own blood drops left behind linked the crime to Kasul Chantakaman. Witnesses in the area had also recognized Chantakaman from a composite drawing and said he was the man that entered the house that day. Earlier that morning... Sarah Walker's ex-husband, Randy Tate, went to her home to pick up their son because Sarah was planning to work at the model home that day. The investigation showed that Sarah first went to a Bank of America and surveillance images showed her wearing a watch that her ex-husband said was a new Rolex she just got and she was wearing a very distinct fashionable ring. That same day, at 9.40 in the morning, Another real estate agent named Mamie Sharplist received a phone call from a man calling himself Chan Lee, who asked her to show him a townhouse that she had listed for sale. The man would not leave a callback number. Mamie Sharplist arrived at the townhouse at 1130 that morning, but having an uneasy feeling about the man that called her, she decided to take her husband with her. As they sat in the car waiting, a white Ford Mustang parked down the street from the home that the broker was set to show, instead of parking in front of the house. The man got out of his car and walked toward the house. Mamie Sharpless asked the man if he was Chan Lee. The man looked at her and her husband and said no. He then turned and went back to his white Mustang and drove off. They described him as muscular, of Asian descent, 
about five feet four inches or five feet five inches tall with a buzz haircut. Mamie Sharpless later positively identified him as the man she saw during Chantakamon's trial. Shortly after that incident with the strange Asian man, Mamie Sharpless and her husband were inside a model home that she was showing to a potential buyer when her husband looked out the window and saw Sarah Walker arriving in her porch at another model home. He watched as she got out of her car and went inside. He also saw that same white Ford Mustang parked in front of her home. Sometime between 12.30 and 1 o'clock, Mamie Sharpless had finished showing her customer the model home and they all left. As they left, the white Mustang was still parked in front of the model home that Sarah Walker had gone into. At 12.30 that afternoon, Sarah Walker had been on her cell phone talking to her cousin, Jessica, and told her that she had to end the call because someone had just entered the model home. 40 minutes later, at 1.10 that afternoon, the married couple that was looking to buy a house walked in and found Sarah Walker dead. It appears that Sarah had put up quite a fight for her life. Furniture, planters, and decorations were knocked over and strewn throughout the room. There was a trail of blood from the dining room all the way into the kitchen, an indication of a horrendous struggle. Kosul Chantakaman had also apparently cut himself during the fight and left his blood on the scene. Police arrested 25-year-old Kosul Chantakaman two months later, on September 5th, 2006, at his North Dallas home. It was learned that he drove a white Ford Mustang. He also had cuts and scratches on his hands that were healing. A forensic dentist compared the bite mark on Sarah Walker's neck to an impression from Kasul Santacamon's teeth and positively concluded that the bite mark was caused by Chantacamon. The Rolex watch and the ring that Sarah was wearing, however, was never recovered. Chanta Kaman at first denied he ever went inside that model home. He would later say that his fingerprints were on the scene because his car had broken down momentarily in front of the model home and he went inside to have a drink of water. But there was nobody inside when he was there. He said that his blood on the scene was from old cuts on his hand that began bleeding again while inside the home. Obviously, the jury didn't buy it. In 2007, he was convicted and later sentenced to death. If you would like to see more of these death row stories, please subscribe so that you are alerted when the next one comes out. I'm Paco Rivera. Bye for now.